with the win here tonight on a crisp October evening through the end zone. And let's go down to Justin Walters for that update on the Wyoming running backs. That's right, Rich. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier today, Harrison Whaley is out today. They're going to be without one of their best offensive weapons after he suffered a leg injury last week against Fresno State. I caught up with head coach Craig Bowl before the game, and he told me losing Whaley hurts because the team misses out on so many explosive plays. With Whaley in this lineup, Wyoming has three 50-yard-plus rushes. Without him, well, the numbers speak for themselves. They're going to have a lot of work to do. Starting in his place tonight is going to be Sam Scott. And Justin, Sam Scott had a starring role. There was no Whaley against Texas Tech, the number 24 team in the country. That's Scott on the first carry, and he's out to the 29. And of course, they beat Texas Tech in Laramie in double overtimes. Andrew Peasley now against Air Force has won two games, once with Utah State and once with the Pokes. Not a lot of quarterbacks on this planet that can say that they beat them twice and certainly with a chance to be a part of a third victory would put him in a class by himself. Scott had a big touchdown run and of course his two point conversion sealed that Texas Tech win. Peasley can run as well but they don't want to expose him to hits like that. And that was Jaden Goodwin coming up from his strong safety spot. Offensively, Scott, what do we have with this running back? He's a very good inside runner, a converted linebacker, so he's got good vision, Rich, and there's a, 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 a kinship between linebackers and running backs because they play so close to the line of scrimmage. Vision is a thing that you have to do, so Scott is an inside zone runner. We've already seen that that's where he's going to use him, but can he have some success on the perimeter? That'll be a big story in tonight's game. And then our Papa John starting offense for Wyoming and right away they're faced with third down and five. Peasley four man rush steps through it has good wheels makes a move has the first down and slides down to the 38 yard line. Alec Mock Jonathan Youngblood with the stop seven yard carry. This is Peasley's second run of the afternoon one dialed run and him just improvising here. He's going to have to do this. There's going to be three or four more third down situations. Air Force likes to come after the quarterback. Peasley's athletic enough to hurt you, and that was a really important conversion there because Wyoming told us a key for them tonight. They have to start quick, and that would have been devastating to go three and out. And his legs really hurt Fresno State last weekend. Scott finds the hole, plows ahead, and that's what he does best is find that hole, pick up yardage. Air Force's defense fourth in the nation against the run. Alec Mock is a playmaker in the middle. He certainly is. He's a senior from Weddington, North Carolina. He's the team's leading tackler and a ball hawk. Well, Peasley, and I think if you're Wyoming, this may be too much Peasley. They don't want to expose him to too many hits. They like him on the perimeter where he did most of his damage against Fresno State. Yeah, and he took a hit there by Jonathan Youngblood, who Coach Calhoun said this guy's a football player, and 44 certainly is. Yeah, Youngblood and Mock are one and two in tackles in the middle of that defense. They're down in three. territory here. Yeah, they're just outside midfield. And Peasley will pull it and get to the outside on the. And a really nice block on the perimeter by number 20, Ryan Marcus. We've seen it already. Peasley's legs have to be a factor. He's catching Air Force off guard a little bit, both called plays and improvisation, but just a beautiful block out there on the edge. Air Force 39 yard line just underway first possession. Peasley has yet to air it out play action here it goes down the sideline open catch there. That's Nick Miles his first catch of the season. Nick Miles is just lined up in a double tight end look off the ball towards the right side of your screen. It ends up being like a mini wheel route and just finds a nice hole in the middle of that zone coverage. But this is a really nice balanced drive here for Wyoming, which is important because Air Force has won the last 19 games that they've scored twice. So if Wyoming scores here, this would be the start that they wanted. And a fast start in the first half. They were dominant in the first half last week. The throw is over everyone's head. 
A year Asante was in the middle, but it was a crowded middle. There was a flag down. They were trying to run an RPO action to suck the backers up based off the run, and they did. He just moved down field. Number 72, offense. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. And that's the challenge with a run. That's a challenge with a run pass option. It's a called run. The quarterback has the option to throw it. If you have an open receiver on an in-breaking route like he did there, it was just out of sync, but doesn't matter. The penalty doesn't help things, and now they're marching the wrong way. In the red zone, Peasley does some of his best work. Six of his nine touchdown passes have come from the red zone. This is the ninth play on this drive. Jamari Farrell now in the backfield for the first time. Second and 10. Peasley's got company, avoids the hit, scrambles to his left, makes a cut, spins around on his feet, and short of the goal line. But on the doorstep are the Cowboys. Trey Taylor made the stop. Rich is an offensive lineman. You have to keep yourself alive. The play's never over. Right now, you're off script, but look at that incredible block by Caden Barnett, the right tackle, giving his quarterback a shot. Touchdown, Cowboys. Of course, it's Peasley. Brilliant on this drive. Rich coming into tonight's game. The red zone proves to be the difference maker. Air Force isn't ready. And this is one of the better offensive lines in this conference. And it was close, but the push was just enough to get the first score of the game. That is ideal if you're a Wyoming fan. John Hoyland, extra point. Third down conversions. Teams just don't come out of the gate like that on this, <clears throat> on this defense. Fair catch. Wyoming, first half last week. Look at this. It was against Fresno State. That's, that's amazing. It, it was 40-plus plays where they just were on fire. Now, the flip side of this is they didn't score a point in the second half. So that's where this team can grow because Air Force is a really strong second half team. But if you're Craig Bowl, you're feeling really good the way your offense took the field. All right, the last time Air Force was on the field, their offense was unstoppable against San Diego State. Larry or the quarterback, play action rolling and looking and setting, gonna fire it deep. A shot there for Cade Harris, and it's incomplete. Right out of the gates. Colby Taylor on the coverage. Well, this is very similar to the game last year where Air Force threw four times in the first 11 plays, but you can see why Mike Thiessen dialed that up, and there was a little bit of contact there. Not the most accurately thrown ball. Colby Taylor is a exciting, energetic player, but Air Force sending the message here early. We're not afraid to take shots. Second down and 10. And it's Michelle straight away, and the Cowboys are waiting for him. Shea Suianoa made the stop. Papa John's brings you the starting lineup, and here is Zach Lair, arm, legs, dangerous guy. The growth and development, the ability, and the fact, Rich, that he was in a three-way battle and wasn't named the starter until 10 days before their opening contest. Where he's grown from that moment to now is extraordinary. And they've tailored this offense, which is so unique, to his skills. And in particular, his ability to get on the edge and go for big chunks of yardage. Air Force may have to throw it here. Two of their first three plays are passes. Third down and nine. Little dump off, and it's incomplete. And a three and out for the Wyoming defense. Harris again, the intended receiver. This is almost a repeat of how the game started a year ago, the one that Wyoming won 17-14. Pressure off that outside edge. If you're Air Force, you can't hold on to the ball. They've got to be quick hitters. He almost gets hit from the backside. That rushes his throw against tight coverage. Punt is away. Fair catch called by Caleb Cooley. And he'll make that. The throw was on the money. Last week, 19 to 27, three touchdowns, no picks. Drives with 20 more plays, 4.7 are the average points scored when you have a big play in your drive. When you don't have a big play in your drive, you get like one point out of the drive on average. 
So those explosives, the over 20 yards, that's a great illustration on how coveted they are by offensive coordinators. And that's why we showed it, because that was what Tim Polisek, the offensive coordinator, said had to happen tonight. We have to be explosive. You have to give him a lot of credit for working with smoke and mirrors at time and bringing this offense along slowly, but he's tasked with what do we have to do to find a way to win, and he's done that very well this season. And if you've just joined us, they're without Harrison Whaley, who's averaging 135 yards per game on the ground. That one a little too far out for Devin Body. And he makes a leap for it, but can't bring it in. This is a long third down. And a reminder that Armed Forces football is proudly supported by the exchange. This is a proud and very good Air Force defense. Part of their success is not being on the field a lot. They're, I guess, the recipient of an offense that is a ball control offense. And in situations like this where you have to bring a play, they like edge pressure, edge or middle pressure with the linebackers up the gut. Scott in the backfield. Peasley fires. That's a seam shot, and that's caught by Gillenborg. This is a talented group of tight ends, and John Michael Gillenborg is one of those. That's a first down. We're going to see some pressure off this outside right here. That's going to open up the middle for Gillenborg. You live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. They were waiting on the aggressive third down pressure, and Gillenborg and this tight end group, Rich, have really stepped up, and in my opinion, could be the same type of mismatch that the Falcons saw when they played San Jose State. And that was a first half in which San Jose State was a better team. Air Force dominated the second half, won that game. And here's Scott getting to the left side. He is a very smart runner, and he got a, a great endorsement this week from Frank Crum, his left tackle, who said, hey, if we're without Harrison, I have full confidence that Sam Scott's going to find the holes. And so far he has. There's Frank Crum right there on the left side of the screen, 75, really playing at a high level. Scouts are very interested in this young man. They've come back to campus a couple different times. He's the alpha dog in that room. And this line goes as Crum goes. And if you want an endorsement in life, Frank Crum is a, a good place to start. Second down and seven. There was some movement there, and Air Force called it out. The officials were late, but they got it. I feel almost ashamed to call out offensive linemen for that move. Ball start, number 79, offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. Jack Walsh, the right guard. It's a young offensive line, but they're playing very well. Yeah, and, and Walsh, notably, his dad, John, was a right tackle at Wyoming back in the late 80s and won back-to-back -back whack titles. But it's hard to hold your water when you're here on the road Crowd noise is a factor. These are two of the least penalized teams in the country. That one hurt Wyoming. Turns into second down and 12. Scott avoids the first defender. And he gets back to the 45-yard line. And so now an ambitious third down for this Cowboy offense that doesn't dazzle you with stats. They're 11th in the conference in yards per game. They're ninth in the conference in putting points up, but they play their best football in their biggest games. The double overtime win over Texas Tech and the takedown of number 24, Fresno State. And this game has that feel to it. A third and 11. Heasley hit as he throws, got it off! Caught there! That's Marcus! Avoids a tackle and is down to the 16-yard line. And Wyoming is clicking. 27 more yards. There was pressure there as well. You're going to see Air Force is going to try to hurry this throw. Great job by Bo Richter off the right side, causing some initial pressure. But Peasley's able to step up by time and with Richter around his legs finds a beautiful shot to Ryan Marcus, the receiver that had the great block on the perimeter on the first drive. Inside the red zone now in an empty backfield. Peasley in the pocket, fires, end zone, and he was looking in the corner 
for Gillenborg, and a flag sits at the five. Gillenborg indicating that he was held. He's a big body, Gillenborg. 6'6, 245. He's a mismatch on anybody in the secondary for Air Force. Personal foul, face mask, number seven, defense. Half the distance to go, automatic, first down. That's on their free safety, Trey Taylor, who led the team in tackles last year. And we showed you the graphic earlier. Neither of these teams are heavily penalized. But Rich, the red zone is one of the areas that Air Force defensively has excelled. That first drive was only the ninth trip that Air Force has allowed their opposition to get inside the 20, and they gave up a touchdown. Wyoming would like to strike hard here. A great opportunity for Air Force to try to force a field goal. First and goal for the nine. Scott's back in. And Peasley pulls. And Air Force was waiting. P.J. Ramsey to start. Trey Taylor to finish. Great discipline that time by P.J. Ramsey. He leads this team in sacks with three and a half, six tackles for loss. You have to be disciplined. To defend this offense, you have to be disciplined. But to play defensive line with the plus one run game, where clearly Wyoming has stated that Peasley's legs are going to be a factor, that was a really nice job there by 13. Caleb Driscoll, a fullback, is in with Scott in the backfield. And Scott. The former linebacker. He was a running back and linebacker in high school, recruited as a linebacker, moved to running back before the bowl game last year, has stuck it out, and boy, did he save Craig Bowl and the Cowboys in that Texas Tech game. He was terrific. And he's been waiting for another opportunity, and it comes here in the biggest of games. It's third and goal. What's Paula Sec dial up here? Does he Lynn? and lean on the offensive line, or does he get Peasley outside with a two-way go where he can throw it or run it? Peasley changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He might like his matchup here at the bottom, one-on-one. -on -one. Fires it. It's Whelan in the corner. Caught it! And touchdown! His favorite target. Whelan's fourth touchdown. And Andrew Peasley and Wyoming are smoking hot. This is the growth of Andrew Peasley. He changed the play. He saw man coverage. Quarterback in the red zone, you're going to like one-on-one, -on -one, especially with the team's leading receiver, Wyatt Whelan. His sixth year, he would, did not play much at all his first three years. Played some last year, and this year he's just transformed himself into a really nice weapon. Tonight's installment of Air Force's Greatest Legends brought to you by The Exchange, the other offensive coordinator. This is Mike Thiessen against Wyoming as a quarterback 23 years ago. What did he have a day? Four rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown. Air Force won 51-34. How about the shoulder pads on Thiessen? Those, those are pretty sweet. Those. <laughs> And he is known in the Mountain West as one of the most innovative and creative offensive coordinators. He's going to have to dial up some positive yards here. And Eman, Emmanuel Michel, goes straight ahead. There's Thiessen. Boy, his game plan and the execution against San Diego State was nearly flawless. He's fantastic. I saw him down on the field before the game. I told him we were going to run that piece we just saw there. He's like, man, I hope we're up two touchdowns before you do that. It's been quite the opposite. So. He's hoping his offense can get in, get in gear here. Larrier, first time on the perimeter, and that's the danger, and he's hit there. No flag. Papa John's lineups. All right, Air Force Falcons. Michelle has filled in the hole left by Brad Roberts leaving, and man, has he had a great start to his run. Those eight touchdowns are the same amount that Air Force opponents have gotten collectively all season. He's the first option in the triple option, and he's been a nice weapon for him. That's Eldridge on a pitch. Eldridge trying to get outside, and he stopped right at the 47 yard line. Wyoming defensively, they were outstanding against Fresno State. 
Easton Gibbs is the next in line to be an NFL linebacker, and they've got two of them in the league starting right now. He's a team's leading tackler. He's got great vision and discipline. We've got some things that we'll show you tonight about what he's tasked with doing to stop this offense, but he's a big reason why Wyoming's been successful doing that over the years. Larrier option keeps it, burst through. Larrier's 40, he's 30, and he's tripped up there. Sprawls forward to the 27. Zach Larrier. You have to have somebody for the dive. You have to have a quarterback, and you have to have a pitch man. That time, Cole DeMarzo was in no man's land. It looked like he was taking the pitch, which meant nobody was on Larrier, and now it's Air Force's turn to show you that their quarterback can run. One of the fastest men in the Mountain West Conference in any sport, the 200-meter champion in the Mountain West, indoor and outdoor. So he can absolutely scoop. Up the middle, Larrier, and down to the 21-yard line. He's had to be patient. He's had to wait his turn. Azik Daniels, a three-year starter, just had a fabulous run as an Air Force quarterback, and Larrier has started his career by going 5-0 and as a starter. And, well, Wyoming has beaten Air Force at its own game. Getting first down, playing ball control. And Air Force, interestingly, has had some explosive plays. Owen Burke in the backfield. And this is Burke straight ahead. And Burke busts his way down to the 15-yard line. That's a first down. Now, this feels more like Air Force football, this no, drive. No question. And look at the movement on the right side of that line. Really beautiful blocks up there. Ethan Jackman, the right guard in particular, running off the ball. There's just no quit in this unit that's coached by former Falcon Steve Lebotsky. This is one of the better offensive lines in this conference, if not the West Coast, and they're playing like it on this drive. Well, last two years, finalists for the Joe Moore Award, which is the ultimate award for the best offensive line in the country. I've heard of it. First, I thought you might have known. First and ten here. And this is Burke. And this is a touchdown. 15 yards. Air Force has an answer. Just some great blocks at the point of attack and coming around. And they just surround and gash this offense. Just a handoff inside on a simple trap play, and if you hesitate at all, you pay the price. That's the drive that Air Force was waiting on. Two explosive runs by Larrier, and then they slug it out with Burke up the miss answers with an Air Force-like drive, and it's a one-score game with Air Force waiting on this Matthew DePore kick. Third down, he's three of three, 56 yards. Air Force has 140 total yards. 80 of those yards are on their five third downs. They're killing it. Play clock got down, and Scott busted out to the 30-yard line. That might be the last snap of this first quarter. Both these teams pride themselves on ball control, on not turning it over, on winning the margins doing all the little things and it has been a success story for both Wyoming their best start since 98 they are at following in their own territory second down and five Andrew Peasley has been brilliant with his legs has hit some big throws to the air scrambling and firing sideline it's caught there Wheelands steps out of bounds as Justin pointed out, Whelan's brother was a member of the Air Force football team, a kicker for a few years. His dad attended Air Force as well. C.J. Boyd on the coverage. One of the strengths of Wyoming's teams, their offensive line, their second best lineman is Jack Walsh. So enter Luke Sandy. Walsh left the game earlier, got injured on a PAT. Luke Sandy's a walk-on, but he's a player the coaches are really excited about, but he just stepped into a very big role, trying to fill very big shoes here on the road. Always a dramatic uh, arrival when it's enter Sandy. The first and ten. Peasley thinking deep. 
hit as he throws. Oh, in and out of the hands of Ayer Asante. Another hit on Peasley. Peasley's tough. He'll stay in the pocket, but the right guard we just featured, Luke Sandy, gets pressed a little bit, and then the linebacker green dogs him and gets in his face. Air Force is getting late pressure one way or the other, and those pinpoint passes we saw him throw last week are just outside the outstretched hands, this time of Asante. 36-yard line, second and 10. Sam Scott in the backfield. This is Scott. He hits the hole quickly. He, he's, he's kind of Brad Roberts like, right? I mean, same type of build and a guy that gets to the hole and gets five yards before you know it. Keep your eye on these two players right here. Great job, particularly by Tulafonu, the center, of just creating that big hole. And then Wes King, the left guard, climbs up to that second level. That vision of Scott was perfect there. The eyes lead the feet for the running back. They miss Whaley, but Scott's played well here so far in the first half. Air Force third in the nation against third down defensively. That's not happening tonight. Blitz comes. Peasley with time, firing to the sideline, and it is caught, Trayton Welch, another tight end. The third tight end to catch a ball already tonight for Wyoming. Rich, and that's the sixth third down conversion. Wyoming is six for six tonight, but look at that big body. That's a mismatch. Peasley has plenty of time, puts the ball on the money. There's not a team this season that's converted more than four third downs the entire game on Air Force. Wyoming is six for six here in the first half. And they're back inside Air Force territory at the 36. Jamari Farrell in the backfield. He's the again looking deep end zone incomplete. That was Alec Brown. The junior. Jerome Gayard, nice job in coverage. A little bit of play action. It takes a deep shot on first down, trying to hit one. Nice job of being in phase by Gaylord. Turns, finds the football. Man, Brown had a chance at it. But take a look at this, Rich. No big plays explosives a week ago against Fresno State. They're coming out party, but tonight they've already had four. That was a catchable ball. And not a bad throw at all. Farrell now right side, and he squirts through inside the 30. They mark him at the 29. So bring up another third down, third down and about three. To play tight end in this offense, you have to be a good blocker. Apologies for the telestration screen here, but keep your eye on 88 hands inside and just keeps his leg moving, pushing Mock out of the frame. That's what you want, an inline tight end that can control the line of scrimmage. Tim Polisek and this offensive line are feeling really good, and Ryan Noor, the defensive coordinator, has to find some answers. Six of six, as Aaron pointed out. You see the damage by Wyoming's offense on third down, another third down. This time, it might be four down territory, but P.J. Ramsey and Alec Mock make the stop. It's going to be fourth down and about two. Great job by Air Force there. We featured Mock with the players' lines up coming in. This forces the field goal for John Hoyland. This is a team, Wyoming, that doesn't go for fourth downs very much, so this is an expected Expected decision in this scenario. John Hoyland's had a good year. He's 9 of 10. His longest 42. This is 45. And if can he bring it back in? No, it stays wide. Then it goes out to the keep with the quarterback and then the pitch. And Gibbs is crucial to tonight's success. And nobody has had more success against this offense in the Mountain West than Wyoming and Craig Bowl. And no sooner do we do that than we see what Easton Gibbs does here. Keep an eye on him. He's locked in right on the quarterback. He doesn't follow anything else. He's not undisciplined with his eyes, but this is why he leads the team in tackles. He's disciplined, and he follows through on his assignments. 
there you're stopped on that first carry fires to the sideline caught there Jared Rosnos with the catch Rosnos is close to the stick but I believe he's shy a half a yard this will be a short third down which Air Force usually converts in their sleep and it's always four down territory they are first in the nation at third down conversions at, at like a record rate 58 percent coming into play tonight. It's incredible. And then if they have to go to fourth down, they're pretty dang good there too with a 70% completion percentage. Emmanuel Michel is the fullback. And it's Michel, who he's hit hard, but he falls forward and has the first down. Initial hit was right at the stick. The second effort, Colby Taylor finishes the tackle. Nice job of Hitting it downhill in the hole right there. Excellent job. But we talked about Michelle and the role that he had to fill last year. But he is the fullback that can run with some power. And that's exactly what you need for this offense to go. This, this is an offense that's led by their offensive line. They need these guys to kind of get lathered up and lean on them a little bit. And I think they're ready to do that. <laughs> That went back to the original line of scrimmage. Armed Forces football proudly supported by USAA. One thing about this matchup, it's such a big game. Troy Calhoun and Air Force have not faced the same schedule as Wyoming. Wyoming's faced and beaten two top 25 teams in Texas Tech and Fresno State. Air Force has clobbered their opponents, but their opponents have not been to that caliber of Wyoming's. Second down and six. Larrier, little swing there and a big collision. <laughs> Isaac White came flying up to break up that reception. It was held, but now it's third down. It's a good hit. Good hit and great eye discipline to get somebody in front of Larrier on the bootleg. But that's what you want. As soon as he catches it, make him earn it. White the sophomore out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Fake on the pitch. Larry is in trouble and down he goes. Sebastian Harsh had backside support, never left his post, and Larry ran right into him. Here he is right here, lined up directly over the right tackle he defeats his block he squeezes keeps his outside arm and leg free and makes a tackle that is a teach tape for defensive coordinator Jay Sawbell that's how you're supposed to play the technique on that situation and now they force Air it's Force a, a fake a fake a direct snap and it's Owen Burke and Burke is inside the 15 and down to the 10 and Air Force Brilliantly executed. Burke, the fullback, in the slot, goes 39 yards with the snap. Rich Air Force catches them in their punt return. This isn't punt safe. They see something they like, and it works beautifully. Great aggressive play calling by Air Force, completely catching Wyoming by surprise after the great third down stop. A little pitch to Eldridge, trying to get to the edge. Cuts in, leaps over a tackle. At the five, at the touchdown! Air Force, 17 yards. What a sequence. 39 on the fake punt, and Eldridge gets into the end zone. And Air Force can tie it with a kick. Wonder if there was a little bit of a hold right there. That should have been a holding call by Emmanuel Michelle. It doesn't get called, and just some great running. And Air Force, secondary to the fake punt, is about to tie this game up. Boy, this went from a Wyoming stop on defense to feeling good about it.
And it quickly went sideways from there. That hurt Wyoming, that Air Force, to their credit, got away with. But those are the things that drive head coaches crazy, particularly with what's at stake here tonight. Reagan Tubbs getting ready to kick off. Wyoming scored the first 14. Air Force has scored the last 14. Time to take a look at our doctor. All right, first and 10. Wyoming at the 25. Farrell. And Farrell's across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Ramsey and Taylor the stop. Take a look at that, Rich. The first three possessions started out really well. The last one didn't end well at all. Ends up being a turnover on downs that Air Force quickly takes advantage of. And all of the momentum that Bowles' team had early on in the first quarter is evaporated. Settle down, start executing. Second down three. Farrell slips through and gets out to the 45-yard line. It's another nice gain of 14 yards. The center and right guard do a nice job on a combination block, and I'm really impressed with Farrell's vision and ability to get north and south. Peasley, Gillenborg, around the edge, knocked out of bounds. I haven't seen a team yet this year that uses their tight ends as well as Wyoming does. And it's almost out of necessity, but when you have big physical athletic tight ends, you take advantage of them. Peasley's been outstanding today. Five different receivers he's thrown the football to. Four of those receivers have 20 plus yard catches. Polisek's calling a great game and Peasley's delivering. Four completions to tight ends. That's the second catch for Gillenborg. Farrell this time. <laughs> Smothers wiped out there. James Tomasi, the nose guard. This was a nice job first by the second level linebackers blitzing and forcing Farrell to go outside. When he does, Tomasi's waiting on him. A tackle for loss on first down is the way you want to start new sets of downs as you start inching closer to the red zone. This is a young defensive line that has talent. They just aren't very experienced. That was a nice play by 62. Play action. Fired over the middle. Oh, caught. And then dislodged. Gillenborg with the catch. And he goes down hard. The ball popped out. And that was Jaden Goodwin. Rich, what they're going to want to take a look at is a personal foul, possibly with targeting here. Ineligible downfield, number 57, offense. That penalty's declined, brings up third down. That was a clean hit. Good no look there. And yes, you can clearly see Luke Sandy, the backup guard, was too far downfield. That's as clean as you can get. A nice job by Jaden Goodwin to hold up there and still deliver a blow with power. That's an example of the targeting rule working. Sam Scott in the backfield. Air Force feels like they've got momentum here. The stadium's coming alive, too. This is a big, big play here on third down. Peasley, four-man rush. Flags are down, and they'll blow the play dead. Richter trying not to pick up a penalty as Peasley went down in his arms. And he avoids that flag, but there's one sitting right at the line of scrimmage. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 11, offense. Five yard penalty, replay, third down. Does third and 12 look different than third and 17 on your play sheet? Your, your chances of converting go down significantly. Man, and it, it was there, not by much. But that's the energy that comes with the crowd noise. They were a factor there. And that's what happens when you let teams come back in the games. This is just what you're going to have to deal with on the road. All right, time here. Make Wyoming prove that they can beat you down the field at this down and distance. Peasley's not had a good year throwing deep. He's just 2 of 18 in passes traveling 20 or more yards, including 0 of 1 tonight. 
but he's brilliant in that mid-range game. Peasley setting, little flip there. It's caught. That's Scott, and Scott has the first down. How about that? 18 yards. Just what they needed. This is how Peasley's improved. He's going through his reads. He doesn't see it. He doesn't panic. He dumps it off to the check down. And then Sam Scott does the rest. A big physical run knowing where the sticks are. And Wyoming converts the improbable. 28-yard line. Peasley's 5 of 5 on third down for 95 yards. And Peasley finds his way, slides in to the 21, but he started the slide back around the 23. So it's a gain of five. Breaking ankles out there. Talking with Troy Calhoun yesterday. Talked to him about the magnitude of this game. What's at stake being in the driver's seat of getting to the conference championship game, owning the head-to-head -head tiebreakers. Kind of downplayed it, said, oh, this is just another game, but you can see how fired up he is. He knows what's at stake here, and it just feels like this is a game where every possession matters. Scott in the backfield. Peasley quick throw. Wheeland up the sideline, and he stumbled. He was reaching for the stick, but he didn't get there before he stepped out of bounds. Right about the 20 yard line got to get to the 18 for a first down. I felt like the throw brought him out of bounds and he's got to throw it to the inside so he has a chance to convert there. Sam Scott right at the stick. Youngblood made the stop for Air Force and that's a first down. They move the sticks inside the red zone. By the hair of the chinny chin chin. Rich, we talked about it at the top of the show. Both of these teams are undefeated. There are no divisions this year, so the highest-ranked teams with the best conference records go to the championship game. We could see a rematch, but you want to be in the driver's seat when this game ends. And I think that's really helped for, for the teams in the mountain, the old mountain division, because those teams seem to be stronger in the first half of the season. Peasley now fires. And that's over everyone's head. Whelan was really boxed in on the sideline. Good coverage there by Air Force. And I'm not sure if Peasley was throwing this away or it just wasn't a good through a throw. And Jerome Gay Gaylord is on the coverage there. Good job of using the sideline as his second defender. And he's a super tall receiver. This is a pass defense it's fourth in the country coming into tonight only allowing 153 yards per game on average and the length they have at corners one of the reasons Sam Scott you can tell he's got linebacker in him right I mean first hit doesn't bring him down no it doesn't and a linebacker just like a running back can you maintain your vision and still find a way to sort yourself? All right, thank you, Justin. Another third down. Wyoming is eight of nine on third downs in this game. This is a third down and a long six. I thought this game would come down to red zone and third downs, and we have a play coming up here that's both. And Wyoming very smartly bleeding this clock a little bit. They want to score here and leave Air Force little to no time. He receives the second half kickoff. Peasley long count, pulls it, throws it, end zone, caught! Asante, touchdown, Wyoming! 14 yards, Asante just kept a foot down, and Peasley again strikes in the red zone. Asante had two catches for 17 yards last week. Incredible ability to track that football over your shoulder at that angle is not easy to do stretches his hands out he sticks the catch they may want to take a second look at it it looked clean to me he got that right foot down and absolutely stuck the catch and that was a pretty risky play call there on first down by tim polisek but again peasley paid it off he's something they haven't had in a while there and that is just blazing speed and a guy that can stretch the defense It looks secure 
I don't know. It, it, his right foot comes up right as he's catching it. It's stuck there, and he's got his right foot in the ground. Good catch, but boy, was that close. And great work in the truck as well. Kicking game that Peasley didn't play was their road contest against Texas. Coaches told us they felt like he kind of fooled them in the App State game, that he wasn't ready to come back in. But as much as he's had to be a factor here tonight running the football, you don't want him taking shots like that in the pocket. Credit Air Force for collapsing there in a big moment. Still a lot of time on the clock. Air Force, as we saw against San Diego State, ran a terrific two-minute drill near the end of the first half in that game into the end zone. 56 days to go in the countdown to the Army-Navy game presented by USAA. Tune in Saturday, December 9th on CBS Sports. But of course, Air Force will tell you, yeah, that's all well and good, but we have more commander-in-chief trophies than anybody else. Mike Thiessen now in Air Force in a two-minute drill. Their approach with this offense is to get the first first down, not get too wild, but if you get the first first down, then you start to open it up. And they have all three timeouts. They're very conservative. And the thinking there, Rich, which is a little unconventional, is if we get that first first down, then we hit the gas pedal. But what's more important to them is possession. They don't want to turn the football over here by being careless, which is why you see them taking so much time between first and second down. Clearly, Troy Calhoun, with the way that this game has gone, Air Force is wanting to bleed bleed this clock so it's second down in five and that will get the first down it stops the clock as they move the chains now they will open it up a little bit more coming up ram trucks halftime report these guys will open it up right away brent stover kevin carter cardale jones all coming up ram trucks halftime reports now they open up. Larrier escapes, caught from behind and dropped. Maybe a timeout here, 43-yard line, 37 seconds left, and yeah. Distance and amount of time on the clock, it's a good time for them, you would think, to take a shot. You have to respect their throw game, and they're trying to get to at least the 30-yard line to attempt a field goal. If they can get this first down, the clock will stop, and it does. Let's see if they've got a play call, and they're quick to the line. It'll stop on the ready for play. This is where you maybe want to take a shot or a perimeter run to get yourself out of bounds. The official will start it on the ready to play, and it's ticking now. They Two timeouts get, is huge. Yeah, they got to get set, and so far, a lot of movement, no snap. First and 10. Larrier has a strong arm. That point's deflected, but still caught. They're going to have to burn a timeout here. Rillos, the tight end. With that unit up front. Second down and six. Larrier fires to the outside. Caught there. Nice move. Rosnos up the field and is knocked out of bounds. That's in the field goal range. And there's still 12 seconds left. I watched Colby Taylor in the game last week. When he's one on one on the perimeter, he has a knack for missing these tackles. That's terrible form and a beautiful pitch and catch by Air Force, who are at the doorstep. They've got two shots if they want to take it to the end zone. And with those timeouts, they might have an opportunity to do that. One timeout left, they can take a shot over the middle of the field. You have to assume five seconds per play here, but you can't get cute, you definitely can't take a sack. Four-man rush. Lair takes his shot towards the end zone. Contact and flags. But six seconds left. Hawkins on the coverage. Hawkins was in position. Just poor technique. And how about this ball with the air? Perfect spiral. That was a beautiful throw. Pass interference, number seven, defense. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And that's the key, the difference between the NFL and college football. NFL, that's goal line. 
here in college football. That's not a bad penalty at all. That may be a smart play by Hawkins. But it did cost them six seconds, so Air Force has one play here most likely before they attempt the field goal. Well, this has to be an end zone shot. Yeah, it better be quick, too. Greg Bowles is going to want his unit to talk about it. I mean, they one on one, but it's got to be a back shoulder frozen rope. A fade is too much time. Only six seconds left. Eldridge in motion. And they're going to hand it off. They've got the timeout. They got to get him down and get the timeout. One second on the clock with the timeout. Man, oh, that was scary. Timeout. Michelle and, and Craig Bowl is contending that time should have run out. And this may be a review. Now, with one second left, I don't know if they can review and put time back on the clock. If it goes to zero, they can. But when it was live, I thought that they got it down miraculously with one second. But that was a ballsy and foolish call, I think, that time by Air Force. So DePore now from 24 with one second left. Kick up and good. AT, he feels that fake punt really helped them get back into the game. As for Coach Calhoun, he was impressed with his team, hung in there. He said that these guys are much bigger than us. We have to do a better job at getting into those gaps. He thinks that his team will be able to hang around, and this is going to be a close one. A lot of big implications, as we said. All right, Justin, good information. Larrier's first play is a carry out to the 30. Both of these teams are really good at the end of the first at the end of the first half and at the start of the second half. There's an old football axiom called the middle eight. The last four minutes of the second quarter and the first four minutes after halftime. Look at what Air Force does. They're 13 and one when they win. Wyoming scored a touchdown. Air Force scored a field goal. So at 73, net net, this next drive for Air Force could be huge for the outcome of this game. Straight ahead, that's Emmanuel Michel, the senior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, who has been outstanding in that fullback spot. First half possessions. Not so good first possession, three and out, but after that, they really clicked. And how about Zach Larrier? Started out 0-2 and has completed five straight passes, but clearly, Air Force wants to get back to basics and fundamental. The strength of this offensive unit is their boys up front, and they've leaned on them already through these first couple plays. And this is just smash mouth football, something that Air Force is really good at. Michelle chews up another six yards. This isn't trickery. Watch this block by Ethan Jackman. This is just moving people out of the pile, running people over, and gets a pancake, tipping them over the pile. That's not cut blocking. That's not cheap. That's solid offensive line play. Second down at four. Larry Err and Air for Wyoming had it sniffed out. Wyatt Eckler. Great job by Eckler. When you're playing the triple option offense, it's almost like man coverage. Everybody has an assignment. That time, the free safety, Wyatt Eckler, was responsible for wherever Zach Larrier went. Everybody went right, Larrier went left, and was met there by 31, who did his job. Those are the assignments that we heard Justin talk to Craig Bowl about, about being disciplined. Only the fourth third down that Air Force has faced. They've converted just one. Play clock down. Got to get it off. And they're going to run out of they time. And Larry has yep. to burn the, the ball where he flashed. Thiessen said, this is the guy I want. Third and two here. Michelle in the backfield. And he'll get it. And he'll power forward. <laughs> My goodness, that is absolute beautiful push by the unit known as the Diesel. It's a very exclusive club if you want to be a member of the Diesel. Yes, it is. And you saw a very late punch of the ball there by Colby Taylor. Something to keep an eye on, the cornerback number six for Wyoming. 
He can be a little hot-headed at times. He's a really good player. You want players to play with emotion, but not emotional. Methodical now. Remember, I mean, the first play of the game, after going down 7 nothing, was a, a deep shot. Really unorthodox call, and, and certainly could have caught Wyoming by surprise, but Air Force didn't hit it. And that seemed to put him behind the sticks, and they did, they went three and out in that try. And that doesn't happen much often because on the ten starts of halves, both halves of all season, Air Force had scored seven of those times. Six touchdowns and one field goal out of ten possible drives, so this is something that they're really good at. So it was unusual for them not to get it. Larry, a quick throw caught there. Rosnos the catch, and he's hammered down by Colby Taylor. And Rosnos is hurt. Is going to be good for the first down. There's Colby Taylor. He beats him. Beautifully thrown and executed. That's a legal tackle, but maybe a little bit more aggressive. You hope that Rosnos is okay because he's really become the favorite target of Larry. It's a tackle emblematic of the logo on the tonight at 245 of the 410 pass yards. That's a significant loss if he can't come back. This uh, this drive has almost been exclusively E-Man, Emmanuel e Michel. And Michel down to the 33 yard line. When you know, look, everyone was asked, Troy Calhoun, Mike Thiessen, What's the comparison between Brad Roberts, who was the great fullback, to uh, E-Man? And he said, no, no comparisons. There are no comparisons. They are different people. They are different players. And E-Man is a terrific fullback, and he's shown it. Good ball fake by Larrier. And he's caught from behind and dropped down there by Gavin Meyer. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by ServPro. You're looking there at Steve Lobotsky, a former Falcon player in the current offensive line coach. Clearly, the adjustment change at halftime was for Steve and his room to take over with the inside run game. The big question I had coming in here was whether or not the Falcons could move the bigger, more physical Wyoming defensive line. And in this second half, that answers emphatically yes. Third down and four is often four down territory. And Larrier spins out of a tackle and dives forward. And I think he's got the first down. Shea Suyanoa made the stop. Let's see where they mark it. It's right on the stick. We've seen Peasley be improvisational, but that was a great job by Zach Larrier of doing the same. That play was looked like it was supposed to go out the front door, and he had to hit it backside where he's all by himself, and he makes defenders miss. Those are the missed tackles that Wyoming was worried about. That's what you get with such an athletic quarterback. And he has it up for the first down, moves the sticks. First and 10, right at the 26-yard line. First possession, second half. Air Force eating up clock and yardage as they go. Michelle again falls forward and the push gets him four more yards. Cole Goodbow made the stop. And you have to be a strong runner to, to move Cole Goodbow as much as he just did. Well, his offensive line's helping him up front. Look at Thor Pagley along and Ethan Jackman, man. Ethan Jackman is jacking dudes. This ain't your grandpappy's Air Force offensive line. These guys run up the football and get movement at the point of attack. Yeah, the average weight is right around 300 pounds on this offensive line. It's amazing what happens when you stop doing survival training in August. <laughs> and this time, Michelle breaks through. That's a first down to the 14-yard line. Rich. My mental chart is saying that 90% of these runs are in the A and B gap. They are going right through the heart of Wyoming right now. E-Man's taken over. You see the first two games, not so much, but his last three games, he's averaging 26 carries a game. And in this one, E-Man, 14 carries, 68 yards. Seven carries on this drive. Larrier again to the 10. That's another five yards. Suyanoa with another tackle. Rich, we're at play 13 of this drive that has bled more than half 
of this third quarter. This is Air Force football. Justin Walters informs us that Jared Rosno's helmet back on is good to go and can come back in the game when needed. Huge. Second down six. Larry or option pitch. Eldridge spin caught fights his way for a few more yards inside the seven. Four yards there. Third down now. And a long one. Maybe two. That's one of the very few pitches we've seen all night from Air Force. And this is a Falcon team, Rich, that in the low red zone, which is where they are, 95% run. The one play call that's, that's the outlier is a bootleg, but they score touchdowns 85% of the time they get inside the 10 yard line. Almost nine minutes on this drive. Third and two. Dive through the A gap. Michelle hit. Surges falls forward. Air Force says they have the first down and they do. Well, Michelle does, but this offensive line has really worked it on this drive. There were some young recruits on the field that were talking to Steve Lebotsky, but take a look at that. Touchdown 17 for 17 on their last goal to go situations. Lebotsky was talking to these young recruits. He mentioned the Joe Moore Award and what it is they qualify for, this is what they're built for right here. Like A-gap runs here. First and goal, little pitch, Michelle hit and stopped. Ball's loose, but I think he was down and the whistles signify that. Easton Gibbs was there to string that play out. That's incredible, this is a team that hasn't fumbled much, if at all, this season. That ball is starting on its way out and moving. It's not fully out, but it's on its way out. They're going to have to take a look at this. Well, they're not going to get a chance. This Larrier with Michelle on his back is in the end zone. And a mammoth drive to start the second half by Air Force, and they take the lead. First place in this conference is on the line. That's play 17 of a 75-yard drive that took 10 minutes and 13 seconds off the clock. That's championship-winning football there by the Falcons. That's the way you respond coming out at halftime. And as you pointed out, you want to win the middle eight, the end of that first half, the beginning of the second half. Remember, Wyoming had a late touchdown under two minutes in that first half, but Air Force got a field goal at the buzzer and then scores on a lengthy drive here. The ball was moving the entire time, then squirts out with an immediate recovery. At the very least, replay should have taken a look at However, that. Air Force didn't give them a whole lot of time. Smartly, they got to the line, snapped it quickly, and Larrier scored on a sneak. That was actually brilliant play calling and a nice job coaching of Air Force and an indication that they were worried about what they might see in replay. That one is through the end zone. Let's head to New York, Brent Stover, for this up behind for the first time. And this is Scott, who seems to go four or five yards every time he touches the ball. That's four. Bo Richter, the stop AP. Top 10 powered by Ram trucks. Well, those first top four teams all played in the noon window, and most had pretty slow starts, but took care of business. Oklahoma sitting idle after that big win after Texas. But credit Washington. The crowd noise was a factor, Rich. And how about that score there? The very end of the first half, Oregon got a turnover, elected to go for the touchdown and not kick the field goal. Those three points ended up costing. Yes, this is Scott with a catch, and he's up the field and out of bounds at the 37. Sometimes when you chase points early, and, and that was a gamble, they ran out of time. Oregon on fourth down went for it, and those three points, and I'm really stunned that you didn't circle the Irish, right? I mean. And while you bring it up there, 
How are we doing tonight? I'm not, I'm not even, I'm so keyed in on this game. I just want to give you some love for calling out. I thought it was good to be aggressive there at the end of the half for Oregon. You I, were right, I was wrong. Yeah, we, we had a long discussion uh, before the game watching that one in the booth. Little trickery here. Asante is caught and dropped, and that's Trey Taylor. And a disastrous play for the Cowboys. When Air Force needs a big play, they come off the outside edges. This is exactly what they do. Look at the top of the screen. There's Trey Taylor. They tried to run a reverse, something they did in the red zone against Fresno State last week. But Air Force was ready for it. That was the perfect defensive call for what Wyoming was trying to run there. And it cost Wyoming 12 yards. Big time. Second and 22. Now you got to climb yourself out of this hole. Eight plus yards at a time to give yourself a makeable third down and possible. Peasley can't slide through. Caught and dropped. P.J. Ramsey with his fourth sack of the season. Day in the life. Now, where is that 12 yard tackle for a loss in this day? Huh? He wakes <laughs> up, morning formation, breakfast is early. You and I are just getting out of bed. Probably around 8:30, class, lunch, officer development, team lift meetings, practice shower, dinner, film. Lights out at 2300. Unbelievable what these guys are asked to do and then play high level of football on top of it. Nine tackles tonight. Put that on the schedule. This is a third and 24, short throw. Scott trying to make something out of it, trying to bounce outside, gets up the field, and he's out of bounds. Short of the first down and just short we know that Wyoming's not a team that likes to go for it on fourth down But if there were a time this may be it Well this certainly if they do punt it this certainly gives them a chunk of field position back and clearly Scott stepped out well before We thought he did this being a fourth and long an outstanding job by Air Force That sack that put him behind the sticks is what is forcing this punt here that's the way you want to start the second half. And the first punt for Wyoming, and not a great bounce. So that field position thing didn't. He's averaging four and a half carries, but Rich, this is the story. Air Force with that last drive basically has evened this game up in terms of time of possession, number of plays, numbers of first downs after getting blown out essentially in the first half. Jared Rosnos is back in. He's the receiver nearest to you, bottom of your screen. And this is kind of what that last drive was about. This is Owen Burke, the other fullback, and he's been terrific this year, averaging 60 yards a game. Eman, Emmanuel Michelle, 80 yards a game. Rich, this feels like an important drive to me because this Wyoming team was in clear control early on, and the table has shifted. And this reminds me of what happened last week against Fresno State when they scored 24 first half points and not a point in the second half and let Fresno climb their way all the way back in that ball game. They're on their way to doing that here if they can't get a stop. Larrier looks left, now darts right, cuts up to the sideline, accelerates, and man is he quick. Good boat caught him, but not before a huge game into Wyoming territory, 18 yards. The right tackle, Mason Carlin, does a good job of getting on Easton Gibbs just enough to nick him, and then that track speed of Larrier does the rest. Good bow is banged up. When Troy Calhoun saw the recruiting tape of Zach Larrier, it wasn't necessarily the football stuff, that was great. But when he saw him running track and accelerating down the stretch, running the 400, he said, my goodness, that guy is going to fit in just fine here. And Larrier on this carry is going to get four more yards. Wyatt Eckler made the stop. That may in the third quarter, and Air Force is humming, man. Rich, to me, this really feels like with the ball control that Air Force is showing that Wyoming, at the very least, has to hold Air Force. Oh, back in your favor. Got to get a couple stops on first down. They were, they're, they're creating way too many uh, second down and five, second down and sixes. And we need a turnover. We've got to stay on the field on offense. We're looking to fourth. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Justin. He's right about that because the fear when you get to this point against Air Force is you may not have many possessions left. 
and Wyoming has forced a turnover in seven straight games going back to last year. They would love to have one here. However, Air Force has turned it over just twice this year. Obviously not tonight. Larry are straight ahead, hit hard there. I mean, that last drive was a lot of Emmanuel and Michelle, and then when they needed it, Larrier burst through. It's good to see Goodbo back out there. This could be two down territory for Air Force. Third and one is usually a layup. No question. And Michelle in the game behind Larrier. Watching outside. It's Larrier straight ahead. Because it was so close in those situations, you have to worry about a pitch to the outside and try to catch Wyoming asleep. But it's this situation that's coming up here, these first down plays. Air Force has averaged five yards a play on first down. They're looking at second and medium almost the entire game. That's a lot of pressure on a defensive play caller to try to get a stop when they're having so much success on first down. There your keeps and man as he meet his match there right in his face. That's Braden Siders. CBS Sports celebrates the contributions, achievements and cultural impact of Hispanic and Latin -A communities during Hispanic Heritage Month. So second and ten this is exactly what Wyoming wants. Now what do you do with this opportunity. And on the flip side, what's Mike Thiessen thinking? Is he going to let Larry throw it? He's six for eight and completed six of his last seven balls. Or is he keep it on the ground and play conservative? Give himself a makeable third down here. It's a pitch. And Michelle gets outside, and he's tough to bring down out there as well. And it looks like he's got the first down. Ten more yards. Move the chains. Move the clock. There was motion at the very end that allowed this edge to get sealed right there. Cole DeMarzo got pinned and that opened up the perimeter and the big play run that Air Force needed on first down was there. Second down. And you heard Craig Bowl tell Justin we just got to get some stops. This is how Air Force bleeds you. They drag you out to the deep end and it's death by paper cut. That's exactly what Wyoming said at the end of that double overtime thriller, the win over Texas Tech. Barrier cut down from behind. That's good trail tackling by Cole DeMarzo. And again, it, you know, you talked about the importance of winning first down against Air Force defensively. Wyoming's done that now on two straight first downs. This gives them a shot. DeMarzo's the backup linebacker, but he's playing the third linebacker today. Wyoming, for the most part, what they see in this conference, they run a 4-2-5, meaning five defensive backs and nickelback. They moved Rook Brown to the safety and cornerback slot, and they're playing Cole DeMarzo near the line of scrimmage. And he's played pretty well so far. They're going to throw it. Fires, and it's incomplete. Rillos, the intended receiver. Rillos has one catch this year. Right read, but it wasn't accurate. It was too far inside of Rillos. And Rillos has had some challenges catching footballs cleanly, but just on second look, Isaac White timed that beautifully and got his hand on the ball right when it got to Rillos. That's just good defense. That ball was catchable. Third down, eight. Air Force four of four on third down here in the second half. Larrier draw flag down. Larrier down well short of the first down. Easton Gibbs the oh, tackle. Larrier's Larrier slow to get up. Is oh. on the ground holding that left knee. This place just went completely quiet. In legal formation, five in the backfield, Air Force. That penalty's declined. Result of the play is a fourth down. Timeout on the field for injured offensive player. Jensen Jones is the backup quarterback. He's warming up right now. Zach Larrier still on the field holding. Ten days before the start of camp, and then Jensen Jones and Ben Britton both had excellent springs and excellent camps. It wasn't an easy decision, but he was happy with what Jensen Jones brought to the table. But this is only the fourth field goal attempt of the year for Air Force, a win for Wyoming no matter what happens. Matthew DePore from 43.
clean snap, and the kick has plenty on it, and it's He's walking good, and he even gave us a, and everybody here, a, a thumbs up on his way. So we'll see, and Justin certainly will keep that monitored on the sideline. Now Wyoming is going to get the football down six with plenty of time left in this game. And the return is Andrew Peasley, brilliant in the first half. Wyoming trying to recapture that magic. Brown in motion, and this is Peasley outside. Peasley makes a cut across the 30, still on his feet, and then sent to the turf hard by Jaden Goodwin. A little stiff arm there, but Rich, Air Force has been so dominant in the second half of games all season, and that's holding true here in this contest. This is what Wyoming needs to do. You see Peasley's limping around there. He's playing physically a little bit of a stiff arm. He's trying to get things done. Just such a great effort. You can tell how much these teams want. Goodwin tried to swipe the ball away, and Peasley moved it at the last minute. You have to protect the football. A turnover here for either team would be devastating. He had a substantial tweak of an ankle in the first half. On the ground, Jamari Farrell. And Taylor makes his 73rd tackle, it feels like. He may be in double figures by now. Brent Stover back to New York. All right, thank you, Brent. Actually, 10 tackles for Trey Taylor. He is in double figures. Gilleborg in motion. Peasley play action. And he's swallowed up back at the 30. Take your pick. Multiple Falcons there. Capono Blake. Peyton Zadroik as well. When Air Force needs a big play, they blitz up the middle, and that's exactly what happens. Alex Monk gets there, but the big news is Peyton Zedroy. He's been hurt, been banged up. The bye week came at the right time for him to get healthy, and Peasley had to hold that ball. I thought he had an outlet with Gillenborg. He opted not to take it, but this is a critical third and long here thanks to the sack. Peasley has bailed him out on third down with his legs. Four-man rush. Peasley's in trouble. Escapes once. Looking downfield. Peasley cuts. Peasley spins. But he's well short of the first down. Alec Mock hauled him down. And Wyoming has to turn it back over to Air Force. Great job by Air Force defensively. Alec Mock is down. But this should be the scramble drill. There's immediate pressure when Peasley starts to go. Go ahead and freeze it right there. These receivers that are down deep have to work to get themselves open. Everybody comes back to the ball, and that doesn't give Peasley any outlet. Sideline. Wyoming is in punt formation. Remember that fake punt by Air Force that sparked them to life back in the first half. Dane Kinneman is deep for the Falcons. The Air Force is in punt safe. They're not going to let what happened to Wyoming happen to them. That's a absolute massive punt because Air Force needs to move the ball and eat some clock. Which means he's got to be a point guard and distribute the football carefully. Here's the injury to Larry. Or hard to see what happens. He does get two bodies that fall on him with his leg and not a good situation. But without Larry, you lose your outside speed and your ability to throw the football downfield. Jones keeps it. You're going to probably see a lot of this. And Jones, he's got size, 6'2", 215, Naples, Florida. And when he's come in the ball game, it's, it's essentially he'll, he'll keep it on power plays like that. And that's smart for Thiessen there because it lets him take a snap. There's no exchange where he's got to hand it to a back and make a read and he can get the pop. For anybody that's ever played football, that first hit kind of wakes you up and settles you down. Now at second and medium, he can start to expand his call sheet. Emmanuel Michel. Ball's loose. It's on the ground. Wyoming has it. Oh, my goodness. Just the third turnover for Air Force all season long. Rich, Air Force has not committed a turnover in any of its last three games. That's the longest streak since October, November of 2017. In the side of this Air Force team with Larry in the locker room, it didn't take long for things to start to unravel. 
25 yard line. Peasley now fires sideline, sliding catch. That's Will Pellisier who makes the catch. Now, this is important because with a touchdown and an extra point, it gives Wyoming a one point lead. But Larrier, in his absence, is critical to what Troy Calhoun's offense can do in response. The best thing that Air Force can do here is to get a stop and force Wyoming to kick a field goal. Sam Scott in the backfield. Ball at the 13. This is Scott. Tough runner. Shoulder down. Spins and picks up more yardage. We'll see where they mark him. Gaylor made the stop. They'll move it all the way to the five yard line. That's just short of the first down. Keep your eye right here on these two blockers. Great job. We talked about Frank Crum. Look at that pancake block. Great edge surge there when they needed it. When they need something, they run left behind 75. And 88 was pretty good there also. Second and two. Peasley so good in this spot in and out of the hands of Scott and that was Mock who was all over him. That's terrific defense by Air Force and that ball was thrown with a lot of mustard on it. It was heat. There was a lot of pepper there. I don't know if it got touched or not or was just so hard but that was great coverage by Mock who's back in the game and the catch Sam Scott would like to have had. This is the area where Peasley loves to find his tight ends. Trayton Welch, John Michael Gillenborg, Nick Miles has a catch tonight. Third down two. Scott big enough to get you the tough yards. It's Scott. And he stopped. And that handoff wasn't clean. Bo Richter blew it up. And the mesh wasn't clean at all. That was a complete bust from Wyoming. Nobody blocked Bo Richter. He's a terror off the outside edge. And if you're Wyoming, you've got a big decision here. Do you kick the field goal or try to go for it? With Air Force's quarterback out, you have to feel good about this Wyoming. Because in the event you don't get it, Air Force has terrible field position. You still have an opportunity to play defense. Wyoming trying to hit the gas pedal. And maybe get a freebie. Air Force has to stay on sides here. Fourth and three. Peasley. Blitz comes. Rolling. Looking back. Throwing across. Touchdown, Cowboys! Trayton Welch, the tight end. And it's tied, and Wyoming can take the lead. Rich, that was the fourth, fourth down attempt all season by Wyoming. They are four for four, and that's the best play call that offensive coordinator Tim Polisek has made all night. Beautifully drawn up, beautifully executed, and a tie ball game that Wyoming is looking to take the lead in with this kick. And he missed it. It was blocked. Air Force got a hand on it. I think Trey Taylor. My goodness. Take a look right here. Trey Taylor is just going to run up right through the middle. Just a delay. That's something they've seen on film at the very least is out coached and he runs unabated. You want to get the operation off on a PAT in 1.3 seconds and Craig Bull cannot believe what he just saw. All eyes on that man Jensen Jones backup quarterback for Air Force. Zach Larrier is still in the locker room. How much is at stake in this one if you've just joined us a whole heck of a lot there are no divisions in the Mountain West this year so the first two get to the Mountain West championship game and if Air Force wins this game it's like having a, a two game lead because they'll have the head to head over Wyoming and Wyoming obviously they want the head to head over Air Force. This is a big one for Air Force because they don't even play Fresno State in the regular season. And of course, Wyoming has a win over Fresno State. And now, here's Jensen Jones, the senior. Now, Wyoming was trying to rip the ball out. 
which is something we haven't seen all game long. But clearly, one of the adjustments that the Cowboys made was try to strip the ball from Jensen Jones. And that ball might have came out a little bit. Let's take a look at it. There's no review yet. Cole DeMarzo coming in from the back. Oh, that ball looks like it's starting to come out. He's under further review. From that side. You can't fully see if it's fully out from that angle, but Rich, it certainly looks like it did, and Wyoming absolutely thought they got another one. Original call was down. From that angle, I don't think you can overturn. From this angle, it, you don't see the knee. The ref blocks it. But the <laughs> and but that official has the look, I mean, look at the view that that official has. So I don't know with either of these two looks. Here's another one. Watch for the knee going down. Just a heads up play by Wyoming. That ball's out. That ball is out, Rich. His knee was still up. You can sync these up to look at multiple views. They have the ability to do that now with the reviews. And I think we just witnessed the unthinkable back to back turnovers by Air Force and credit our camera folk. The women and men in the truck on the replay machines because we've had three really good looks at this. This was the original one and as we noted you can't really see the knees. That was a combination of 25 Cole DeMarzo and Easton Gibbs that ripped this ball out and there you see the knee wasn't down and the ball was sitting on the back of a Falcon. So from that the third look that we had in super slow mo looks like a definitive fumble and the officials are watching clear recovery that's a great point as well. Clear Original media, call yep. is down by contact. What a nightmare for Air Force Rich we're talking driver's seat of the Mountain West Conference. We're talking probably ranked in the top 25 tomorrow at noon. We're talking an opportunity to be the highest ranked group of five conference champion and go to a New Year's six bowl game. You know what the visibility of that does for recruiting and for these programs in the world of NIL and the portal. The economic windfall. It's significant for both of these teams for both of these blue collar blue blood cut from tough cloth coaches that run their programs the way that football was created to do. And you see the look on the right on Troy Calhoun's face Air Force in five games coming into this one had turned it over just twice just twice and in the last two snaps two fumbles. After review the ball was fumbled prior to the runner becoming down immediately recovered by Wyoming first down Wyoming. You saw Craig Bull <laughs> celebrating about five seconds before the official announcement he had heard and Wyoming who seems to play their best games in their biggest games this year are doing it again here on the road against Air Force. Football is a simple game Rich and in a style of offense between two teams where possessions are at a premium Easton Gibbs the player that we featured off the top the leader of this defense may have just made the biggest play of the season for the Cowboys but they have to do. Scott that's a yard Alec Mock the hit and again if you're just joining us Air Force has lost their quarterback Zach Lair. He's been in the locker room for over 20 minutes. He walked on his own without limping much into the locker room but he hasn't returned. And Jensen Jones with a couple of turnovers in relief. We've seen a couple teams this year in Boise State when their back turned it over twice came back in and saved the day. Jensen Jones has to keep his head in this game and right now the Falcons defense needs to do their job. Scott and right now Air Force's defense is fired up. This is going to be third down and long. And remember that an extra point was just blocked. So if you're John Hoyland who in his long career had never missed an extra point that was the first one. This could come down to Wyoming and a field goal to take the lead. 
Wyoming started out red hot on third down, nine for ten in the second half, though they've been 0 for three. And I didn't like those first two play calls, a little too conservative, I thought, because now there's a lot of pressure to try to get this done and convert it here. Peasley, blitz comes. Peasley in the pocket. He's hit and dropped. And that's a much longer field goal now. Bo Richter with the sack. Loss of six. Mark it at the 35. Peasley seemed indecisive here. Bo Richter, good job collapsing the pocket. He didn't get deeper than Peasley, which would have opened up the escape lane. He retraced his steps, squeezed the pocket with the bull rush, and now a mega kick by John Hoyland for a chance at the lead. See his career, he's hit six over 50. This from 52. Has the leg, and it is no good! Wide right! It's getting excited. He's a former Falcon football player, nicknamed Bandstand. He's fired up because his offense has a chance to get themselves back in this thing. Handoff is clean. Jensen Jones, in his first two snaps, fumbles. Air Force somewhat has dodged it. It's still tied at 27. If you're Mike Thiessen, where do you go for yardage here and get yourself in a spot where you could kick a field goal and win this? You do just what you did there, which is get five yards on first down, handing it off through the A and B gaps. You don't want to put Jones in a position where he's got to pitch it, minimize his ball handling. But here's the thing, Rich. When we were talking to Troy Calhoun, he said you can't give up on guys. His experience was that if you stick with a guy seven, eight, nine times, eventually he gets it, and that's being put to the test here. Third down three. Wyoming has loaded the box. Jones pitches. Eldridge breaks loose. Eldridge 40. Eldridge 20. Eldridge 10. He will go out of bounds at the one yard line. 57. Now they call it a touchdown. Unbelievable. 58 yards. Rich Craig Bowl has to be sick. I thought there was a hold out here on the perimeter. It's hard to see, but what's easy to see is John Lee Eldridge, when Air Force needed a play, steps up and delivers the biggest of this ball game. Only his third carry of the game, and he goes yard. That was a late call by the near side official. I'm surprised they're not reviewing that or at least looking at it. He did not call it. He looked for help from another official. Then signal touchdown. What was in a bad place? They turned it over twice. Their starting quarterback out. Jones, not a lot of experience running it or throwing it. Well, Rich, there's two minutes and 17 seconds, and Wyoming has two timeouts. There's plenty of time for this offense and Andrew Peasley to have a chance to tie this thing up. Who knows, maybe Craig wants to stay aggressive and goes for two and tries to end this thing in regulation if they can score. But the Falcons' defense has been... Keeps them alive, and they score on a long run. So Peasley now, who was brilliant in the first half. But Air Force in the second half, much better defensively. Peasley flushed, escapes. Still alive, looking, it. fires it, and it's dropped. All of that work, and he put it on Whelan's numbers. That was a remarkable job for the ending of a play to give it a chance. Whelan's got to bring that down. But Peasley's lucky he didn't get sacked. Oh, that ball hits him right in the money. And he'll be the first to tell you he should have had it. No question about that. Peasley's mobility has declined as this game has gone on. He's been limping since the first half. When he got tackled on a sack, he came up gimpy, and he just hasn't been the same since. Peasley setting, firing, and has a man. That's short of the first down, though. Sliding catch there. 
by Trayton Welch. And this is where you have to calm yourselves down. You see Wyoming's trying to get up and go hurry up. You don't want to get yourself all flustered. You have time. You need to be urgent. Just don't rush. It's third and one, and they're going to throw. Peasley's throw in traffic. It's incomplete. And now it's fourth and one. Are you surprised they threw it there? I am. He had a check down to Scott to the right, who leaks out right here, but he's keeping his eyes downfield. He's waiting for him to break, but Jaden Goodwin was there. And the ball game's coming down to this. If Air Force gets a stop, this bad boy may be over. Now, Wyoming does have two timeouts, so they would have a chance. You got a big back in Sam Scott. 6'2", 230. Fourth and one. Got to get just past the 35. They'll throw it again. Blitz comes. Peasley's in trouble. Unloads, and it's over! The head of Wheeland. And Air Force gets the football. A minute 38 left, and Wyoming is down to two timeouts. Twice with just a yard to get. They threw it. When Brian Knorr, the, the special teams, by the Falcons today. Jones is going to keep it, and Jones! I can help it. Down to the 11. That's and that will do it. What sweet revenge for Jensen Jones. The two fumbles hanging heavy on his shoulders. He made the pitch that led to the touchdown. And here, to win the game, he needed a first down, and he picks up 14. Nobody's ready for Wyoming. They were unclear on the call. They reduced themselves down pre-snap, thinking that ball was going to hit in the A-gap. And the most unlikeliest, and how fitting that it's Jensen Jones' legs that has the game-saving run. <laughs> well, you said it. Joy Calhoun told us sometimes you got to stick with a guy and, and, and give him opportunities and stick with him. And, and at some point, he's going to come through. And Jensen Jones did that. Still no report on Larrier's status. Of course, with Navy coming up next week, that's a big game. And Wyoming, who's been so good in their biggest of games. I mean, the double overtime win against Texas Tech, holding on in the fourth quarter to take down number 24, Fresno State. Felt like they were on their way when Larrier was out. An extra point would have given them a one-point lead, and they missed it. Rich, special teams give it and take it away. Remember, out of state, Wyoming won that game because they blocked a kick and scooped it, returned it for a touchdown. Ball don't lie, the football gods respond. Hats off to Jensen Jones for hanging in there. And this Air Force team that's undefeated and sitting in pole position atop the Mountain West Conference. The Falcons are 6-0, 4-0 in the Mountain West, in the driver's seat for the Mountain West Championship. These guys could see each other again in the championship game. There's, there's a possibility without divisions that if Wyoming handles business throughout the stretch and things shake out the way they seemingly will on paper, this could be the first of a couple games that we won't soon forget. Well, that man will not forget, and that man will get his team ready to play after a bye week, they're on the road against Boise State in two weeks. And the cadets are still filing on the field, emptying the seats to get down here for the alma mater. And they have enveloped this football team who has really dazzled. This was the toughest test yet. And here is the alma mater.
Colorado Springs. Somewhere in the middle of that is Justin Walters with Troy Calhoun. Justin? Coach, what a win tonight. Larry goes out. You guys had two fumbles. What impressed you most about the poise and your resiliency this evening? Uh, we have plenty of resiliency. I mean, they, uh, we really, really, they, they were incredible in the first half. And uh, probably in a lot of ways, we were fortunate. Uh, it was only a 21-17 game, you know, there at that point in time. So uh, we hung in there. Oh, my goodness, do we hung in there. There's a part of me, I wonder how, you know, how you're able to do it. but. Uh, we responded. Hats off to Wyoming. They have a tremendous football team. How about your special teams tonight? Fake punt, and then in addition to that, a huge block for the field goal yeah, or extra point. Yeah, you're right. Both those plays, uh, you know, and I thought our coverage on kickoff cover was really good, too. What is Larry your status? Do you have any updates on uh, him? We'll see. He's bouncing around. He's got a little grin on his face, but he's a winner. Whatever he can do, he'll help. And then finally, how about Eldridge? He doesn't get that many touches, but he breaks one off to the house for the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, he, uh, you know what? There's nobody that cares more than John Lee does. So uh, for him to have a play like that uh, is pretty darn neat. Well, go ahead and enjoy this one, Coach. You're 6-0 and for the first time since 2002. Oh, goodness. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Justin, nice job there.